Hey everyone, another week, another tier list, I guess, right? Well, actually, I shouldn't say that I haven't made a souls related tier list in a while, and I've kind of been itching to make one. I feel like these are like a good avenue to conversation and for me to talk shit about um, Dark Souls. Oh, is that gonna get me demonetized? I swore in the first minute. Future Mr. Sketchhead, please don't forget to bleep that out. Um, Anyways, here we have another tier list and today's topic of conversation is going to be me ranking all of the Dark Souls games areas. Now, when I say Dark Souls games, I do mean the Dark Souls games. So Dark Souls 1, 2 and 3. There are tier lists available which include everything like Sekiro, Bloodborne, Demon Souls, Elden Ring. But honestly, if I did that, if I had to rank all of the areas in Elden Ring, which includes like the dungeons and shit, I think we'd be here till like next week and I kind of don't want to do that. I mean, let's keep our videos to a reasonable length here, not to have people like fall asleep. But yeah, this does contain all of the areas in the first three actual Dark Souls games, which is I think manageable. So we are going to be talking about all of these. Now how the tier list is set up is standard S through F. I do have the doesn't count tier because if you look at this list, there are some areas which are, yes, they are technically on paper separate areas if we count that they are separately named, but in reality, they are really not. Uh, let me try and pick out an example. The King's Passage, perfect example. This is that small area from Lothric Castle to the Mirror Knight boss room. Like, yes, it's a separate named area, but it would really be pointless and kind of impossible to rank the King's Passage as a separate area because it's it's just a part of Lothric Castle, so it doesn't matter. I'm gonna rank it as Lothric Castle. So anything like that, I'm just gonna move into the doesn't count. I think the Old Chaos is here somewhere as well, which is just the boss area for the... Was it? What? Burnt Ivory King, that's his name. Yeah, like things like that, I'll just move there. So without further ado, Let's get into this. Oh, there it is. Without further ado, let's get into this because we do have a lot to talk about. And yeah, let's talk about all of the Dark Souls games areas. Let's go. Starting off strong, we have the Kiln of the First Flame. I say starting off strong, but it's actually just going to go into the C tier. I feel like the Kiln of the First Flame is just the definition of a C tier area. I mean, it looks cool visually, A. A, absolutely fantastic visually and atmosphere wise, but this area just has nothing gameplay wise. It's essentially just an extended corridor with a couple of enemies to a boss run. And that boss is of course Gwen, who we've talked about a couple of weeks ago. Not the worst final boss in a Souls game, but not the best either. The enemies are just Black Knights, which you fought most of these enemies before. There's nothing original here. And of course, I do have to mention that the run back to Gwyn himself is strangely annoying and strangely lengthy for a final boss. Uh, yeah. In fact, you know what? I think Kiln of the First Flame is going to go into D tier. Like, that, it doesn't deserve C when I think about it. There's nothing to this area aside from its looks. Yeah, kind of boring. Firelink Altar goes into the doesn't count. It's just the intro or the opening to the Kiln of the First Flame. Yeah. Things Betwixt, the starting area for Dark Souls 2. So this one is a little bit more interesting. Uh, I just don't like the way the tutorials are set up. I do like the look of this place, but I kind of hate how it feels very tutorially. You know, you go into the fog gates and each of them is like a tiny little arena that teaches you something. It just doesn't feel organic at all. And again, this is kind of like the Kiln of the First Flame where it's mainly about the looks. Um, yeah, not my favorite. I tend to just run through it. So yeah, especially in Scholar where they like added an area which has some like pretty crucial items that you can only get to later. It's really annoying. Um, that's even more annoying. Uh, yeah, the actually when I think about the Scholar version of Dark Souls 2 made a lot of these areas a lot shittier. So yeah, I'll be sure to mention that when we get there. Earthen Peak, yeah, this one is most infamous for the weird transition, but it's one of the main poison areas of Dark Souls 2. It has some really weird mechanics. 
Well, actually, this probably counts Harvest Valley separately, which is the real poison area. Yeah, this is just a tower. Um, super, super annoying enemies and really aggressive ones as well. Um, but it's not the worst. Uh, I think it's a solid D tier. Uh, I say as as I say, it's not the worst. Yeah, there's not much to this area. It kind of feels like just kind of a hodgepodge of random enemies that don't really make sense. Um, you have the headless sort of mannequin assassins, the pyromancy ladies, and the weird sort of mummy looking guards. It's a really weird sort of like, again, mismatch of random enemies. And yeah, it's not the best. Shrine of Amana, um, you guys know, if we're talking about uh, Shrine of Amana on opening day, Dark Souls 2, that's an easy F. This was easily the most frustrating and irritating area in the entire game. I would argue probably in the entire franchise, aside from like, well, it has a few competitors at this point, like the Lake of Wrath from Elden Ring, but with the improvements and with the nerfs and scholar, I think it goes up to a primo E tier. This area is still awful. The sorcerers are really annoyingly placed. They deal way too much damage. They are way too aggressive. Those um, knights, I don't remember what knights they're called. The, the other enemies, the non-magic caster enemies, they are not hindered by the water. Um, they don't stagger at all. They're not parryable and they are really aggressive and deal a shit ton of damage. And it just makes for a miserable experience. Not to mention all of the enemies hidden in the water. Not to mention all of the pitfalls and all that. Really, the one saving grace of this area is that it's pretty fair with bonfires. Uh, and, of course, the boss is piss easy at the end. So you don't have to go through this place too many times when you're going to the boss. But otherwise, this is an awful, awful area. We have the Dragon Sanctum next, and I actually really like the entirety of the first DLC for Dark Souls 2, including the Dragon Sanctum and all of that. And yeah, this I think gets an easy A tier. I really like the look of the Dragon Sanctum. I feel like it still keeps the sort of maze-like feel of Shulva, and it just has a really unique atmosphere, this sort of Mayan theme, which hasn't been matched ever in any other Souls game. And the enemies are good. I mean, there is a gimmick here with the sort of the graves of the enemies that you have to break for them to sort of materialize and you'll be able to hit them. But it's not like a really, really annoying mechanic uh, because it's pretty logical. You can just go through and destroy the graves and they stay that way. So that's very handy. And I think overall, yeah, I like the Dragon Sanctum. It's very unique, feels kind of puzzle-ish. There are no actual puzzles here, but I kind of wish there was. And yeah, overall, good area. Firelink Shrine. I think this is the Dark Souls 3 Firelink Shrine. Yes, it is. The blue ones are the Dark Souls 3 areas. Yeah, the ranking the sort of hub areas is a little bit difficult, but I think Firelink Shrine is going to go into a C tier. There are a couple of very easy enemies here. And of course, this is the main hub. Look-wise, Firelink Shrine is up there. I really like the look of it, but yeah, I mean, it's a hub area. What can you say? All the merchants are here. You're going to be warping back here a ton. And yeah, that's one of the things about both Dark Souls 2 and Dark Souls 3 is that the hub area contains everything. Whereas I kind of think it was cool how in Dark Souls 2, sorry, Dark Souls 1, it was kind of spread out. You know, you had different merchants in different locations, whereas in the latter games, everything just moves into the hub area, which is a little bit more convenient, but it's sort of the world sometimes loses its sort of interconnectedness, which is a word I kind of like to use. Lothric Castle, this is the late game version. I think High Wall of Lothric is the other one. I actually really like Lothric Castle. It's going to go into the E tier. I actually really like Lothric Castle. It's going to easily go into the A tier. I think the thing with Lothric Castle is that, again, it has a lot of callbacks, but it calls back to Demon Souls, which is always cool, especially with the latter part. And I think overall this area is, first of all, a good challenging late game area. It has enough maziness, but it's not very complicated. It has challenging enemies, but again, nothing too major. The bosses are really fun. I like the Dragon Slayer armor. I think the two imprints are a fantastic boss fight. 
the visuals are solid and yeah i think this kind of area is just perfect for a late game area uh, you have the really great shortcuts uh, leads back to the starting bonfire multiple times which is always something you like to see and again it just has a good mix of solid cohesive enemies which do bring quite a challenge and of course you have the added benefit if you really want to be a masochist you can come here way earlier and really push yourself and challenge yourself because this area is tough if you come here early but listen if you can beat the dancer low level you're probably already set yeah nothing much to say about Lothric castle other than that really solid area i like it the Northern Undead Asylum, infamous tutorial area of Dark Souls 1. I wonder how many people got stuck here, really looking back. Probably quite a bit. Uh, I think the Northern Undead Asylum, if we consider both versions when you come back to, is like a solid B tier area. I mean, it's nothing special. As a tutorial, it has a lot of atmosphere. And I think it does the teaching the game mechanics a little bit more organically than Things Betwixt does. It doesn't feel sort of as tutorial-ish. And I think that's kind of the charm of the Northern Undead Asylum. Boss-wise, it's kind of uninteresting. I mean, it's two fat demons, but as an opening boss, the um, Asylum Demon is pretty cool. And I think overall, yeah, just this is the, like a nice solid opening area. It sets really well the tone for Dark Souls. And coming back here later is a lot of fun because the layout is just different enough and you have kind of cool new items to pick up. So yeah, cool, cool tutorial area. The Great Hollow is going to be next. I hate the Great Hollow. Um, it's easily going into... I'm going to put it into F. I don't know if that's con controversial. I don't think anybody likes the Great Hollow. This is a platforming area which are, believe me, always going to be scoring low. And as far as these ones go, the Great Hollow is awful. There are a ton of pitfalls, slippery ledges, unclear platforms on where you drop down to. Plus they fill the area with basilisks, which can of course insta-kill you with the curse. I mean, they curse you, so if you get hit, you lose half of your HP. Plus again, with all the pitfalls, the area is really difficult to navigate to. And when you get to the bottom, they put those annoying ass mushrooms there, which have, first of all, an absolute metric ton of HP, and they deal incredible amounts of damage, which just the creme de la creme when you finally descend the Great Hollow and you get one punch KO'd by one of the mushrooms and insta kill, and then you have to start the whole thing again. So, yeah, this is not a great area. Uh, thank fuck it's optional because uh, I don't think anybody likes this place most people i know including me just drop down get the chloranthi and get the hell out of here because otherwise unless you really want to go to ash lake there's nothing worthwhile here all right undead purgatory i feel like this should go into the doesn't count because this is just the boss arena for the chariot it's not even an area all right drang lake castle see drang lake castle is an interesting one because i feel like this is in many ways a good area with the themes and the setting and all that i like the rain and the atmosphere but it's just so let down by the shitty texture work of dark souls 2 this is easily one of the worst looking areas um the again the textures the wall textures are just really shoddy really low res and it just looks awful the area as a whole and just because of that how much of an eyesore it is i really can't give it anything other than a c i think Enemy-wise, it makes sense, although Scholar, again, has some weird additions. I mean, it randomly decides to put more of those mannequin enemies in, and it randomly puts one of the sort of executioner chariot on that purgatory horses in there. Just some really bizarre choices. And yeah, other than that, I wish I could give this area higher, but I can't in good spirit. The boss is terrible as well. Well, not the Mirror Knight, but the other ones, the two Dragon Slayers. And yeah, this is just an eyesore of an area. On the other hand, what's not an eyesore of an area is Shova Sanctum City. Shova, I think, just like the Dragon Sanctum itself, gets an easy, easy A tier. I really think that Shova is a fantastic area, really maze-like, lots of levels to it, lots of layers, a consistent set of enemies which are challenging. I know Dark Souls 2 has a ton of knights, this area is no different, but overall it's just a great area to explore. Lots of shortcuts, 
lots of like tricks to it with you raising the levers and lowering them. And yeah, really cool. One of the best, I think this is easily the best DLC packs for Dark Souls 2 and easily the strongest area. The Profane Capital. See, the Profane Capital is kind of a good area, again, visually, but it's, again, led down by the fact that there is basically nothing to do here. I think it's just going to go into the C tier. I like Yorm thematically, but the Profane Capital has just so little to do. If you don't go for the quest line of going back to the jail and rescuing Solaire, not Solaire, Ziegmeier, Ziegward, whatever his name is, uh, you can just basically run through this air entire area without ever having to fight a single enemy. You enter the fog gate, you fight Yorm, which is one of the easiest bosses in Dark Souls 3, and you can just get out. You can just finish this area in five minutes if you need to. And that's kind of a shame because they clearly put a lot of work into this area. But again, the content of it are really, well, just lacking. There's nothing to do here. All right, Anor Londo. Now you might think that Anor Londo would be our first S tier, but I don't actually think Anor Londo deserves an S tier. I think Anor Londo does deserve a solid A, but you have to admit there are some, while well, again, thematically Anor Londo is on top and it's a wonderful area. It does have some annoyances. I think one of the main issues with Anor Londo is not even the enemy selection because Silver Knights and the Demons make sense. But I think there are a couple of points where this place relies way too much on the challenge of the platforming aspect again. I'm talking specifically about the rafters uh, at the beginning with the painting guardians and of course the infamous arrow section. I think relying that much on killing the player by shooting them off of a ledge and just having them fall to their death uh, is kind of a cheap challenge instead of actually offering interesting enemies, which is weird because Anor Londo does have interesting and fairly challenging enemies, so I wish they just went a different route of just killing you a bunch of times while you, like, you get knocked off a ledge. But visually and thematically, this area is a 10 out of 10. It's really significant to the story. One of the few areas that has actually returned multiple times, of course. And yeah, overall, I just wish it just had a little, little bit more of an interesting challenge. Lost Isolith, oh, Lost Isolith, I think, is going to go easily into the F tier. I think Lost Isolith very clearly is an unfinished area. Um, first of all, the entire area is super empty. There's barely anything to do in this place. Uh, the enemies are absolutely terrible. You have those little gnome fire spitting things, not interesting and super, super weak and easy to where you are at that point in the game. The dragon asses, just a lazy reuse, you don't even have to fight them. And then you have a couple of those Lovecraft looking weirdo uh, tentacle enemies, which are again, there's just, you fight like one or two and that's it. Really boring area, annoying ass bonfire setups, uh, the, the run back to the bed of chaos, which is one of the most frustrating bosses in the game, is just absolutely awful. The texture work again and just like the emptiness of this area is really noticeable. And again, it's clearly unfinished. This is clearly an unfinished area. So I could maybe give it a little bit more if it didn't also have one of the most annoying and frustrating bosses in the game. But with that and the fact of how difficult the runbacks are, yeah, I can't give it anything more. Iron Keep from Dark Souls 2. The Iron Keep, ugh, God, this thing looks awful. Uh, first of all, the transition from Earth and Peak, as we all know, to Iron Keep makes no sense. But I don't. I think what saves this area are the enemies. I kind of enjoy fighting the the Alon Knights. I feel like that Knight Samurai archetype is pretty interesting. But I can't give this place anything higher than an E. First of all, again, the looks of this place are just god awful. Um, I'll give it that. The lava is better than Lost Isolith, but other than that. The whole sort of feel of this place is really weird. And aside from the fact that the Alon Knights are fun to fight, the whole setup of the area, especially the first part, is mega annoying. Uh, this contains easily the worst run back in franchise history. One of the worst, definitely. With running back to the, what you call it? Not Stray Demon. Well, you know who I'm talking about, the big fire dude uh, from Dark Souls 2. 
And yeah, the end boss, another big fire dude is even worse. Really shitty boss, just a generic demon looking thing. And yeah, overall this area has nothing interesting to offer other than a couple of cool enemies. Uh, what is this? I can't even read this. This is a cemetery of ash. Another tutorial area. This one is actually, again, a fairly good one. I would put the cemetery of ash in uh, the B tier along with the Northern Undead Asylum. Again, this is a good tutorial, easy, but has some optional challenges, teaches you the mechanics organically, and has a pretty cool looking, challenging, but also not really challenging boss at the end, as in challenging for new players. Um, and I think that's, that's pretty awesome because, um, yeah, again, that's the type of tutorial we want to see. Yeah, nothing much to say about this place. It's good, good as a tutorial. Now we have the Dark Souls 3 version of An Orlando, and that's going to join the other An Orlando in the A tier. Now I think this version of An Orlando fixes a lot of the issues of this An Orlando in that there is actually like no platforming and nothing where you can fall down. Still you keep the enemies um, of the Silver Knights and all that, which makes it interesting. Plus it adds a couple of those monk enemies which shoot fire at you, which is not difficult at all. However, where this area drops the ball is that I just wish there was a little bit more to do here, which there is actually very, very little to do here. Um, this is another one of those areas where you just can pretty much run from the bonfire straight to the boss and just enter the boss fog and not do anything. And I think basically any other area, any other area you can like sort of blaze through in five minutes is never going to be S tier, but I do like the reference. I do like the looks of this place. Thematically, it makes sense, despite it being another nostalgic callback and the enemies are fun and the boss isn't too bad either at the end. I know kind of some people hate what's his face, but um, I, I don't hate him. Uh, this is not the worst boss. So yeah, not a bad area, not a bad area. Painted World of Ariamis. I think this is, again, a solid B tier area. It's a nice little hidden secret and I do like how you get to it. This is probably the most hidden secret, I would say, one of the most hidden secrets in Dark Souls, aside from like Ash Lake. And this is an actual area, whereas I think the Great Hollow and Ash Lake combo is kind of boring. There is actually a lot to do in the Painted World of Ariamis. Um, there is a lot of sort of side areas and secrets you can discover. The enemies in general are not the worst. I wouldn't say they're the best. The most annoying ones are those toxin ass, uh, sacks of shit, which, you know, when you kill them, they spray toxin on you. That's really, really annoying. And I wish that didn't exist, but hey, it's there and you kind of have to deal with it. The area itself, again, I feel like has a good mix of enemies, although it does kind of feel like just a hodgepodge of random shit thrown in there. The only like original enemy here is the that crow, Velka crow looking enemy, which is a fun one. Yeah, it's, it's a good enemy. So yeah, overall nice little secret area. Can't complain about it. Harvest Valley, fuck, it's a poison area. I don't like poison areas and Harvest Valley is mega boring. Uh, pretty much has some unavoidable poison, like when you're, you're gonna get poisoned and poison is awful in Dark Souls 2. Luckily, this is another one of those places you can go through really fast and the boss is super easy. So it's gonna go in the D tier and stay there. All right, Majula. Now you guys know I kind of have a soft spot for Majula. I think it's easily the coolest of the hub areas in the games, in the Dark Souls games, I should say. The look of it is really nice and I, I think the theme is probably my favorite theme out of all the hub areas. So it's going to slide into the B. Now I can't give it anything higher because there's actually like not much to do here, but I think Medulla does deserve a little bit more credit for its thematics. Belfry Soul on the other hand, fuck, this is really boring. It's just optional area. You can run through it. You don't even have to fight anything. Uh, it's part of a covenant sort of thing. And yeah, that's it. What can I say about Belfry Soul? It's dull. Undead Crypt. Fuck, there are a lot of Dark Souls 2 areas. The Undead Crypt, I actually kind of have mixed feelings on. It's going to go into the C tier because some parts of it are really good. I like the look and that main area that you can light up all the statues in is pretty badass, you have to admit. But I just don't like the enemy setups here. 
Uh, and the enemies themselves are kind of cool. You have those ghost looking things that cast magic and you have some of those uh, big shield guys. Uh, so not much like of an issue enemy wise, but some of the setups here are just really annoying, especially the end, the Velka run up, Velstat, sorry, not Velka. The Velstat run up is especially awful. You're pretty much gonna have to do some like crazy running around and kiting to actually properly get to Velstat, whereas you would have to fight like 20 different enemies before getting to him each time. I mean, Velstat is not difficult, but it does kind of sour the experience. So yeah, I would say average middle of the road area. Cave of the Dead. Now, this is where I get into trouble here. I sometimes get all of the like side areas of the Dark Souls 2 DLCs confused. So let me just look this one. Yeah, this is the one from DLC 1. Uh, this is probably the least awful version of these areas, uh, but it's still just gonna get, actually it's gonna get an E. I mean, it's just one of these co-op run through areas and it's really annoying, but it's saved by the fact that you can just run through. Not saved by the fact that it has the gang squad at the end, which is an absolutely god awful enemy and boss combos. So yeah, not cool, not cool. We have the High Wall of Lontric next. The High Wall of Lontric is going to join the others in the A tier. Uh, I think the High Wall of Lontric is a really solid opening area for Dark Souls 3. It, I kind of just, it kind of just sets the scene perfectly. I also really like when Souls games do that thing where you can see a really sort of late game area from the first area, which is a thing here with the High Wall of the like the high wall and Lothric castle itself and i think the sort of boss combo here is pretty good there are some optional challenges a good mix of enemies the visuals are on point so yeah can't complain the high wall is a fantastic area the consumed king's garden is gonna get a c oops i moved the wrong thing is gonna get a c i think the consumed king's garden is again let down by being one of those areas where you can just sprint through it unless you want to unlock the shortcut but again it's sort of this is sort of a poison area almost a poison area couple of night enemies but nothing unique and then you have a pretty good boss at the end i do have to say uh that the consumed king is yeah it's a solid boss but nothing special with the area overall um it's a nice little sort of side place though can't complain about it the other Firelink Shrine is going to join this Firelink Shrine. I think the interconnectedness of this Firelink Shrine is a lot better. I mean, it's a war it's an area you have you can only warp to from like the halfway point of the game. But the way it's sort of like integrated into the main world is really cool. And I think that's the strongest aspect of this Firelink Shrine. But just like with the other ones, it's just a gathering place for NPCs, no actual enemies or anything to fight. But you can do some platforming and you can get to some like later game areas, you know, like going to the catacombs and all that. Yeah, it's just a hub area. What can I say? Ash Lake is kind of let down by the fact that you have to go through the Great Hollow to get to it. But other than that, looks wise, this, this thing is absolutely on point. I love the look of Ash Lake, the sort of Mongolian throw singing soundtrack that goes on is really unique actually for the series but it's another corridor no unique enemies and pretty much you just hold down the sprint button and you get to the end uh, and you can get to actually the items you want which is probably the dragon sword or the dragon covenant but no boss and basically nothing meaningful to do here so that's kind of a letdown ulusil sanctuary i think ulusil sanctuary is and all of the dark souls one dlc areas are pretty good and they can go into the a tier easily um, the Ulysseal Sanctuary is, I mean, it's, it's a good opening to the DLC. It calls back to the actual Darkroot Garden in many ways. A uh, good mix of enemies, fairly challenging area, um, and kind of challenging area enemies, but nothing you can tackle. So yeah, it's just a nice little bit. Actually, you know what, considering how the other areas are, I'm going to go knock it down to a B. I don't like Ulysseal Sanctuary as much as the High Wall or something like that. Forest of the Fallen Giants. This is Dark Souls 2's opening area. And it's not a bad one. Um, I mean, 
What I kind of like about this place is it's very involved. There's a lot, and this is a huge area, uh, and it has a good mix of, well, actually I shouldn't say good mix, it just has sort of basic night hollow enemies, but there's a lot to do here, and that's kind of what I like about the Forest of the Fallen Giants. Plus, of course, one thing, like I mentioned, that I really like is when you have to come back to an early area for late game stuff, and the forest definitely fulfills that. The last giant is, well, he's an opening boss, I should say. He's not the best. He's not my favorite opening boss, but overall, the area, I can give some credit to it, has some atmosphere. All right, we have the Shaded Woods. This is, uh, I don't like this area too much. It's just a forest. Um, annoying enemies. I hate the uh, mechanic of enemies where they're invisible and you can't lock on to them. That just pisses me off. So yeah, that's going to be it for the Shaded Woods. Can't say much about it. Um, Aldeus Keep. Aldeus Keep is a little bit more interesting. I kind of like that it looks like a natural history museum. But there is some stuff to do here. I hear the mismatch and hodgepodge enemies actually make sense because Aldia was kind of a collector. But I actually know I'm going to knock it down to see because as cool as this place looks, I, it's just another corridor you can run through. So there isn't that much substantive to do here. But still, the boss at the end is really easy. And now when, you, you, when you're experienced in the game, you can just again sprint through it. All right, let's move on. Where were we? Uh, I think the next area we want to cover is Dragon's Rest, which is a dozen count area. This is just the boss room after Elana and the boss room for Sin the Slumbering Dragon. We have the Undead Settlement, Mr. Bloodborne Ripoff. Uh, yeah, this is totally just a Bloodborne area in Dark Souls 3, but it's not a bad one, uh, despite the fact that it is a ripoff. It has sort of interesting paths and a pretty unique atmosphere. And it still kind of keeps with the Dark Souls 3 aesthetic. Only shame about it is the boss is absolutely terrible, but there are quite a lot of layers to this area. So yeah, B tier, not the worst. Untended Graves are just the sort of lights off version of the Cemetery of Ash. Pretty much exactly the same thing. Uh, more difficult enemies naturally, but... I don't know, This I, I found this look always to be a little bit weird, the completely sort of black sky. It uh, doesn't really make sense, it looks really strange, but the area itself is not the worst, and it has one of the sickest bosses in Udex Gandir, our champion Gandir, I should say, so yeah, that also goes into the B tier. The Undead Burg, we are here, people. We have officially gotten our first S tier area. The Undead Burg, I think, is as perfect as an opening area could be in a Souls game. Everything you need to know about a Souls experience is perfectly, perfectly distilled in the Undead Burg. You have a complex area with maze-like paths, uh, there are ambushes, there are different layers, secrets, hidden items, hidden merchants if you look around. A ton of shortcuts. There are so many shortcuts in the Undead Burg that it's crazy. This includes the lower Undead Burg as well, by the way. Um, that it's absolutely insane. I think, again, there are, there's no better distillation of the Dark Souls experience than when you first go into the Undead Burg. It perfectly captures everything that the series is about. And I think because of that, it is one of the best areas in the entire franchise. The Catacombs... The catacombs are not bad generally, uh, I don't mind it, I, I kind of like the sort of idea that it's a tomb area but it's also a little bit brighter. Um, the only thing that's kind of a shame about the catacombs and the thing that really lets it down is the fact that you can skip most of it. Um, that's just like, again, if you know what you're doing second time through, there's just zero reason to actually explore this place. Um, you, you can just like drop down a couple of Ledges take a little bit of fall damage. If you have fall control, you don't even have to. And then just get to the boss, which is one of the shittiest bosses in the game. Well, not shitty, but he is extremely easy naturally. Yeah, this area, I will say, is interesting if you come here early. So it has that going for it. And I kind of always respected that. The Royal Wood. Um, this is just the same as... I, I already explained everything in Ulusil Sanctuary. I just took it as Ulusil Sanctuary, so... Yeah, my thoughts are already covered. 
Hate Tower of Flame. This is actually, I do like how unique this area looks. And I think this is one of those places where you really have to differentiate between the original Dark Souls 2 version and the Scholar of the Sim version, because look-wise it's all the same naturally. And I, again, really enjoy the look of Hate Tower of Flame. But man, did they fuck up this area in um, Dark Souls 2 Scholar of the First Sin. That whole mechanic of those uh, dormant knights being here, the Hate Knights, instead of being scattered all around the world like they were in the original, is just a terrible idea. And those are really difficult early game enemies, and they are really annoying when they're chasing you down. And overall, the whole experience of Hyde's Tower of Flame just becomes more miserable in Scholar. I realize I've said Hyde four different ways every single time I mentioned it. Uh, so if we are going by the Dark Souls 2 original version, I'd probably give this a B. If we're going by Scholar, it's a D, so we'll compromise and go to C tier here. Doors of Pharos, terrible. This is optional, a mostly optional area. Um, nothing interesting here, just a lot of uh, Pharos lockstone doors and a couple of invasions. One of the crappiest sip, safe ripoffs you could think of. It's just a giant rat. And yeah, there's absolutely nothing interesting in here. Luckily, like I said, it's optional, so you can just go the other way and go through this pretty quickly. This is the dragon... Fuck, I can't read this. Is this the Dragon Eerie or the Dragon Sanctum? Uh, or the Dragon Shrine? It's counted separately, but we'll count it together. I think this is another one of those areas that's like heavily brought down by Scholar of the First Sin. Actually, I should probably count the Dragon Shrine separately. Uh, the Dragon Eerie was a great area. Uh, well, not great. It wasn't fantastic, but at least it was an area in the original Dark Souls 2 version. Um, however, here in Scholar, you can just skip the entire thing and it's absolutely pointless. So you have an area that was okay. It's, it's like the, uh, sort of typical dragon area you have in most Souls games. And they just like completely, they were like, yeah, fuck it. Yeah. Go ahead and skip it. I don't know why it's a D tier. Um, again, it's difficult to sort of discuss which version to count, but yeah, it wasn't a fantastic area before. Don't get me wrong. Memory of the King, this is just the Vendrick thing, it doesn't count. Um, Road of Sacrifices, yeah, I would say this is another one of those mid-tier areas, nothing special about it, just a couple of enemies you go through pretty quickly. Um, I will say that lower area, the swamp area, is a little bit more interesting. It has a couple of things going for it, uh, but nothing, absolutely nothing special about it. Grand Archives, uh, that's going into B tier. I kind of like the Grand Archives, first of all, I think this is a way better version of the library archetype. Like the Duke's Archives is not my favorite. And I think the Grand Archives is just basically a straight up improvement on that. And here I do actually, shut up YouTube. Here actually I do like the mechanic of uh, the fact that you have that Crystal Sage sort of running from you and chasing you down. It's kind of the prototype of that mechanic you have in Elden Ring in the carrier tower where you have that NPC sort of shooting at you and it works and actually like I said it's a good mix of enemies um, and it's a fun area got some complexity to it it's a little bit maze like and yeah I like the Grand Archives can't complain about it. Undead Parish is going to be our second S tier area I think Undead Parish is great it pretty much continues the greatness seen in the Undead Burg but ramps up the challenge for sure I really like how many ways there are to approach the Undead Parish, in that if you're a skilled player and you know what's going on, you can basically beeline it, get through the door or the gate before it closes, and you can basically skip a large majority of it. Uh, less experienced players have to go the long way around. The church area is super iconic. I mean, you just have to say that that is an iconic Dark Souls area. And of course, I think it, this area pr probably has one of the most iconic as well bosses of the series in the form of the gargoyles so yeah it's a really critical location looks fantastic even after all these years and yeah it's just a really great area can't say much more about it on the exact opposite end of the spectrum we have the tomb of giants which is easily easily f tier i hate the tomb of giants and that's putting it lightly 
I think this is a terrible area with one of the worst gimmicks ever thought up by From Software with the darkness. Extremely annoying, extremely frustrating to navigate. Lots of pitfalls, again, cheap deaths with just getting you to be ambushed by one of those giant skeleton dogs you can't see even though it's like three meters in front of your face. Lots of pitfalls. Yeah, fuck, I hate the Tomb of Giants. And it has a disappointing boss at the end as well to boot with Nito. So yeah, out of... While I don't hate the Tomb of Giants as much as Lost Isolith, it's only marginally better. Marginally, by a very, very small margin. I'm not a fan of it. And that's putting it mildly. Ulusil Township. Ulusil Township, I think, is a very, very solid A tier, easy A tier pick. This is an area, DLC areas are always a little bit more sort of polished and all that, and Ulusil Township is no different. Again, lots of layers to it. The enemies are interesting, even though there's technically really only two enemies here, two major enemies, which is one of the things that hold it back. Uh, is that you do tend to see the sort of same combat situations all over again, but look-wise it's really good, got some solid items, and yeah, it's just a nice build-up on, on the whole DLC, and it is the main meat area of the DLC, so got that going for it. Yeah, overall, really good area, can't complain about it. Cathedral of the Blue, this is just an extension of Hate's Tower of Flame. Uh, Brightstone Coat, Seldora, <sighs> Dark Souls 2 area. I don't like it. Um, it's a mine area. It doesn't really have its own identity. It seems like a weird little mismatch. It has mega annoying enemies. Basically Shrine of Amana Light, but yeah, the enemies are a little bit less irritating than Shrine of Amana, hence the upgrade. And it also has a really generic and terrible boss in the Duke's Tear Freya. And yeah, the only thing that this place is going for it is that it has a ton of easy to get upgrade materials, but spiders are annoying, the sorcerers are annoying, look wise, kind of a boring area, yeah. Again, classic lower mid tier Dark Souls 2 area in my view. The Dragon Shrine though is pretty good. I think it's gonna get a solid B. The only reason I can't give it higher is because it doesn't have the most interesting progression. There are really only two paths here, and I think this is one of probably one of the few areas that was improved in Scholar of the First Sin. I like that mechanic, honestly, where you have to fight the Guardians, uh, because it was one of these areas that was really easy to run through, which is still possible at this point, uh, but it just kind of has a more unique mechanic to it. And yeah, overall, pretty cool. The look of both this and the Dragon Eerie is pretty fantastic, so yeah, solid area. Broom Tower, the second DLC area. Um, I actually think and kind of wish that if this would have been the Iron Keep of Dark Souls 2, uh, it would have been way better. I think this is a way, way better version of this sort of lava fort area that the Iron Keep represents. Way better. I mean, the enemies are slightly more interesting, although you can make the argument that basically the enemies across the three Dark Souls 2 DLC packs are the exact same thing, uh, just like a random knight enemy. But I really like the Broom Tower. It has that kind of descending progression, which is not something you see. It really only shows up in the catacombs. Um, this area is also pretty good looking, and it has a unique gimmick, which I don't actually mind with the Elana... Not Elana... I'm not gonna remember her name, with the statues that you have to destroy, so yeah, not a bad area. Actually, it's probably just a B. <laughs> I, 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 a is a little bit too much for Broom Tower, just realizing. Cathedral of the Deep, uh, yeah, C tier, I mean, what else, what is there to say about it? Uh, I do like that there is the outside portion and the inside portion. The outside portion tends to be really annoying with the ambushes and... Um, yeah, it's just not my favorite area. This is one of those areas I just want to get through as quickly as possible. And it's one of those areas I always get lost in at least once um, with like the descending platforms and where you go and the shortcuts and all that. But that's one of the best aspects of this area that it technically only has one bonfire and you just keep shortcutting back to it, which is what you want to see in Souls games. And it's well implemented here. 
Arch Dragon Peak, I honestly think this might be controversial, but I don't know. But Arch Dragon Peak, I think, is an S tier area. Arch Dragon Peak is absolutely fantastic. This is one of the best looking areas in the series, in my view. I really, really like the the above the clouds look and the how bright and sunny it is. I think the lighting works really well with this area and it really feels like you're up in the clouds of some mountain and exploring a secret fort. Other than that, the whole area itself I think is really well designed as well. Sure you have that stupid dragon gimmick boss fight at the start, but that one is fairly easy to get through. Um, the area itself is challenging and while it's not the most maze-like, it does have its, its sort of like differential progression. Now, one of the best things about this area is naturally the end boss, uh, the Nameless King is fantastic. And yeah, it just overall lifts the area um, and how you transition to the Nameless King is really cool as well. But in general, this is a fantastic looking area, fantastically designed. Darkroot Garden, I'm not a big fan of. Um, I'll put it in C just because I'm being generous here, but uh, it's just those stupid trees really sort of um not the most interesting enemy up until this point you're playing dark souls you have like knights and all that and you have this random tree dude which they're not even that easy when you first play the game but yeah um not much to say about it it has sort of a cool atmosphere to it though duke's archives as previously touched upon i am not a fan of the duke's archives i wouldn't say it's terrible but yeah the duke's archives always it's a late game Dark Souls area, which is always, it brings that sort of unfinished vibe. And while I think the Duke's Archives is the most finished out of the unfinished areas, it is still not my favorite. Um, just the crystal enemies combined with the channelers is <clears throat> a pretty annoying enemy combination, to put it mildly. And the fact that the channelers keep sort of teleporting away from you. Um, also gotta mention that the boss run back is terrible here with the crystal caves, like absolutely terrible. And like I said a couple of times, I don't really enjoy when one of the main challenges is just getting you to fall off and the invisible platforms in this place pretty much just are designed to do exactly that. Chasm of the Abyss, um, this is just essentially partially the, the manus um run back area there is not much to do here aside from the few cool secrets of rescuing sif and there are a couple of items this is probably the best humanity farming spot in the entire game um but other than that you're not going to be spending a lot of time in the chasm of the abyss it's d tier i mean there's not even that much to look at because the whole area is just super dark no man's wharf is kind of a funny one uh, the pirate area. Uh, it does have a good atmosphere to it. One of the things I like about Dark Souls 2 is that a lot of the areas feel a little bit more lived in. They feel like more real world locations and I think No Man's Wharf represents that pretty well. I do like the mix of enemies here as well. So yeah, I'll put it in C tier. I can't really give it anything higher because at the same time we do have to admit that it's also progression wise not the most interesting area. And the boss absolutely sucks, um, so there's that. It'll get a C, and then we'll just move on. Alright, Grave of Saints, rat area, um, optional, and good thing that it's optional because it's super boring. Uh, the Throne of Want, yeah, that's just the end game. There, You can't even get to the Throne of Want, right? Oh yeah, I guess it's the, the run-in. Iron Passage, fuck this area. This area sucks. It's terrible. It's awful. Every single thing that's wrong with the optional areas of the Dark Souls 2 DLC packs is represented in the Iron Passage. This area is hell to get through. I hate it. Um, it's super difficult. You can't run past the enemies. Uh, the boss is mega annoying. Yeah, fuck, fuck the Iron Passage, seriously. Farron Keep. Um, I kind of like Farron Keep. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, it just has that vibe. Uh, that That like sort of solid vibe. It looks really cool um, and I do like the atmosphere of the whole area and some interesting enemies. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's an A tier area. 
Kill not the first frame, this is just the, the ending area, doesn't count. Now, Dark Root Basin, I kind of covered at the same time as Dark Root Garden, so I'll move it there. Same with the Crystal Cave, I covered all my thoughts when I talked about the Duke's Archives. The Last Bastille, uh, yeah, this is prison area of Dark Souls 2, it's not bad. Um, one of the things is, this is another one of those areas that I think was like seriously downgraded in Scholar, where the main progression path through the Last Bastion is blocked by a stupid um, petrified statue. I don't know why they put that mechanic into Scholar the first sin. It's absolutely terrible and it just doesn't work. But other than that, the Last Bastion is pretty cool. There's that like two-tiered approach in the vanilla game, or if you have uh, what you call a fragrant branch, uh, which is pretty cool. And yeah, there is a lot to explore here and a lot of different layers. So let's put it in B and we'll call it that. The gutter, I do not like. It pretty much is like a less egregious version of the Tomb of Giants. Also has the mechanic of the darkness. But one of the things that saves the gutter is that you can light all these like sconces, which will stay lit. Uh, with the torch and of course Dark Souls 2 has the sort of thought of giving you a torch by default that you can use anytime so you're not stuck without light you are like you are with the Tomb of Giants so, but it's still one of these areas that's just like relying on the darkness gimmick there's only hollows here and the Heineken uh, box which has since been patched out and yeah that's pretty much it uh, the gutter sort of like again classic lower mid tier Dark Souls 2 area um, I'm not going to be able to differentiate between the giant memories um, because I don't know them off of by heart. Uh, yeah, Memory of Yeg is the boss one, but pretty much basically have the same thoughts with all of them. It's These are like mid-tier areas. Um, the giants are just like not fun enemies to fight. The boss is okay, but most of the time if you go into any of these memories, uh, you're going to essentially be sprinting through uh, getting to the end because you're just gonna want the giant soul to take down Vendrick and nothing else and While it would have been cool to have this like battle Actually taking place, you know, this is the first time you saw something like a battle scene of two factions fighting in a souls game the fact that they both attack you at the same time and I know you can befriend the commander in one of the memories, but it has never worked for me it just makes for areas where you're just going to be holding down the sprint button and getting to the end as quickly as possible. Memory of the Old Iron King is an interesting one because it has a great boss. Alon is fantastic. I love the Alon boss fight. It has such a good theme and such good dynamics to it. But the area itself is fucking terrible. Like the fact that it's basically structured like one of these Iron Passage areas. Um, it's just terrible. The enemies are mega difficult. There's zero ways to kill sort of skip enemies um, You're just gonna get swarmed by the fog gates. So the run back is mega annoying every single time And yeah, as fantastic as Alon is it cannot save the terribleness of this area Catacombs of Karthus on the other hand is pretty good. I kind of like this area um, it is a huge upgrade over the Dark Souls 1 catacombs. It has way more interesting enemies and way more interesting looks and way more interesting progression. It's a little bit more maze-like and of course you can't just skip the entire area, although you can, you can skip a pretty good chunk of it. But I like how the layers of this area is built up again in the descending fashion. And again, I just think this is an improvement over the catacombs in every single way. So I think I'll be happy to put Catacombs of Karthus into the B tier. The Painted World of Ariandel, I think, is going to join the Painted World of Ariamis um, in the B tier. DLC area, and this is a pretty good DLC area, not the longest. I think the length of this place is something that people always complain about. But yeah, it's pretty much just an Ariamis reference, but a little bit more modernized. And I do like the ways in which it's modernized but I don't think it makes enough changes or brings enough improvements to move it up into A tier. Depths. This is probably the first area you will encounter in Dark Souls, which is like a little bit of a disappointment. Um, I feel like this is as mid-tier as they come. The depths are just... Um, it's interesting with how sort of maze-like it is. 
but you kind of realize you can skip the entire area once you have some experience and also the enemies are not the most interesting you're just gonna get poisoned or cursed even if you encounter the basilisks and yeah this is just the look of it is super boring too not to mention the new Londo ruins would be interesting look wise um, and it kind of has that horror vibe once you drain the water but what really brings down the new Londo ruins is a the ghosts that ghost mechanic is so dumb and the fact that you need an item or specific weapons to fight them is just stupid but it wouldn't be stupid if it, they didn't have that stupid mechanic of them floating through everything which is really janky uh, and then once you get to the bottom, the Dark Wraiths are not much more of an interesting enemy, um, including with the bosses. I will put it very generously into C tier and leave it at that. Belfry Luna, pretty much exactly the same as Belfry Soul, except this is the night one. Yeah, not much more. Pretty much everything I can say about this, I can say about this. Black Gulch is not good. I don't like the Black Gulch. It's one of those areas where, again, it's designed in a way that you can't in any way easily skip the enemies. So you have to kind of find the the second bonfire. And in fucking Scholar, they of course had the audacity to block the second bonfire with a statue, a petrified statue. Yeah, this area, I mean, it's okay looks wise and just it with the poison spitting sort of statues it just really annoys you because it's essentially a poison swamp you're just not gonna get like poisoned from the actual swamp you're just gonna get poisoned by the statues yeah kind of sucks uh and it's that's probably the weakest part of dark souls 2 that sort of uh gutter black gulch descent frozen elium lois though is pretty fantastic i feel like this is a great snow area and I like that we finally get to see a frozen area that is not inside of a painting. Um, Eleum Lois has finally some enemies that work differently to the other DLC packs. Um, I also like the fact that you need to go through this place multiple times and really explore. I mean, this is a hugely complicated area. And again, that's one of the difficult things about ranking these areas is that not all of them are the same size, but... I really do enjoy how many different layers and paths there are to this area. It's again probably the most involved place in the entire game of Dark Souls 2. And yeah, it gets high marks for it. I like the bosses, I like the enemies, and yeah, just a, just a good, good solid DLC area. Smoldering Lake, yeah, no, no, Smoldering Lake ain't it. The fact that it doesn't really have any interesting enemies aside from those stupid crabs and you have the giant um, ballista if you don't deactivate it shooting at you constantly. You just run around, pick up the upgrade materials and get the hell out as quickly as possible. Also that dune reference worm is so goddamn janky that it's impossible to sort of like take seriously. The drag heap. The drag heap is pretty damn fantastic. Um, I think DLC Pack 2 is way better than DLC Pack 1 uh, for Dark Souls 3 and starting with the Drag Heap is a really solid one. I do like this design of it being like the whole world being converged together which is a theme of Dark Souls 3 and I think that's like a good representation within the Drag Heap and it's just a great way to solidly start off DLC 2. Blight Town, the infamous Blight Town. Uh, now that the frame rate is actually stable, this area is improved. Probably would go into like here uh, when it's still at shitty frame rate, but it's not much. But not much better. It's just a poison area, and I feel like again it relies a little bit too much on getting you to fall off. Those toxin enemies are hell, and I feel like when I I swear I remember a patch or a version of this game where they dropped um, the blooming purple moss guaranteed. They don't do that anymore, so if you get hit by one of these guys and you get the toxic status on you, you're pretty much screwed, uh, unless you like warp to a bonfire or just accept that you're gonna be dying. And then of course, mandatory slowing poison is never fun to deal with, and this this is the first area that did that, and it has been infamous ever since. The Abyss, same thing as the New Londo Ruins. Sinner's Rise, same thing as, uh, what you call it, 
God, where is it? Lost Bastille. It's basically connected. Uh, Dark Chasm of the Old. This is the, the optional covenant area of Dark Souls 2. Um, yeah, this is difficult to raid because it's an optional area, so obviously there's a little bit less effort put into it. But no, I'll put it in E. This is nothing interesting about it. Um, all of the enemies are just like NPC gangs. Uh, I will say the boss at the end is pretty cool. But again, it's a difficult one to raid because you're like only going to come here if you're part of the Covenant, but still not the not the most interesting. The fucking Frigid Outskirts. You guys know where this is going. This is one of the most infamous and probably the worst area in the entire series. None of these, not the Great Hollow, not the Tomb of Giants, Lost Isolith, Iron Passage could ever compare to the annoyance and the frustration of the Frigid Outskirts. And this is still to this day the only area in any of the Souls games that I've only completed once. I've done it once, I beat the two cats at the end, never again. I'm avoiding this place like the absolute fucking plague. This is a terrible area and it never should have been included into the game. Erythil of the Boreal Valley is easily going to get an A. Uh, this is a really striking area. I love the look of it and I love sort of the vibes it brings. The enemies are unique and again, it's just the atmosphere of it. And of course, the reveal when you find out that this is actually the lower part of An Orlando is super cool. And as referential as Dark Souls 3 is, this is the type of reference I find really cool and I think more of it should have been sort of included like that into this game instead of, you know, because Dark Souls 3 makes really overt references to the previous games, but these subtle ones like Irithyll being essentially an Orlando is a really cool reveal. Spoiler alert, by the way. Yeah, good area and it also has Pontiff Sullivan that is a great boss. The Ring City is going to get an S tier. I love the Ring City. I think it's easily, out of all the DLC areas, the best. Um, it really brings that vibe of the other S tier areas in that it's very complicated and just has like a lot of layers to it. And the enemies are interesting. I even like the mechanic of the avoiding or stealth mechanic of you avoiding the archers. And I think the, again, just sort of what this area brings, whether you're being... Uh, chased by the dragon on Medir, you knocking him down and just the whole progression of this area is fantastic. It has actually like a lot of action set pieces if you want to say and all in all it's just a fantastic area. Good shortcuts too with how it like loops back around. So yeah, fantastic area and easily best in class for the Dark Souls 3 DLCs and almost all of the DLCs as a whole. Quelag's Domain, this is just a boss arena, um, nothing much. Valley of the Drakes is just a little corridor. This is such a tiny area that is difficult to rate. Uh, not much to do here. Uh, it does sort of link together two key areas, but you're not going to be spending much time here. Huntsman's Copes. Uh, I do like the lighting and the skybox, but other than that, this is kind of a shitty area. Um, there's not much to do here in what I mean by there's not much to do here is that there's no like really loop backs or you figuring stuff out. You just go to the end, fight a couple of enemies. And yeah, I mean, it's not even the most interesting enemies in the world. Um, again, cool look though and good skybox. If I rated the Shrine of Winter, I think I would be doing this a disservice. Oops, I moved the wrong one. I don't think we can count the Shrine of Winter as an area. Uh, neither can we the Memory of the Dragon, and neither can we the Cathedral, which is just a uh, pre-boss arena. <clears throat> Irithyll Dungeon. I just wish this place didn't have that stupid mechanic of the health drain, because otherwise it's not a bad area. Um, it's a cool dungeon area, kind of recalling Demon Souls, but that health drain, man, wh why did they have to go with that health drain? It's such a stupid mechanic with the fact that you're not even uh, like able to avoid it. I wish there was some like item or tactic or something to avoid the health drain, but it's not possible. So it just becomes really annoying. Sense Fortress. While, you know, I've railed on areas that rely on 
uh, traps and pitfalls to kill you. I will give Sense Fortress the exception because it's pretty much set up to be that way. Uh, it doesn't do it to be cheap. It does it because that's the entire purpose of the area. And you know what? Over the years, as frustrating as Sense Fortress was at the start, I've kind of grown to love it. I think it's one of those places that's really unique in that we've never really had a trap area in the series since then. Uh, and I think this place does it pretty well. It's unique in Dark Souls and unique pretty much in the series. Now, this might be blind fanboyism. I'm not sure it deserves the A rating, but I'm going to give it because you don't want to screw it. I like Sense Fortress. What I don't like, on the other hand, is the Demon Ruins. The Demon Ruins are super boring. Everything is recycled. There is not a single original idea or enemy in this place. Um, and that's kind of the thing that brings it down. And one of its saving graces is at least you can go through it quickly because, uh, man, you don't want to spend a lot of time here. You don't want to spend a lot of time in that whole Demon Ruins lost idol portion of the game. Yeah, what can I say? It's E tier. And finally, Sanctuary Garden is just the boss arena for the, what you call it. And there you have it, people. That's like the, my tier list, not the tier list, but my tier list of the Dark Souls 1, 2, and 3 areas. If you've made it this far, I congratulate you seriously, because this was a marathon. What I will say is that I was kind of expecting this. Obviously, I kind of thought about this, but... One of the things that I think is the strength of this series is that it has a lot of solid areas. Maybe it only has a couple of fantastic, like truly fantastic areas. It has a ton of really good ones and few terrible ones. And I think that's why these games are so fondly remembered and thought of in that the good areas and the solid areas way, way outweigh the bad ones. Um, and I think that's the the sort of whole strength, again, of the series. Instead of there, like, I wasn't expecting too many S-tiers because there's only, like, a few of these that really hit that special mark. But overall, all of the areas are really solid in this game. Outside of the stinkers, but I think these stinkers are pretty much sort of agreed on by the whole community. So like I said, if you made it this far, congratulations. I truly tip my hat off to you. If you did enjoy, make sure to like this video, comment, subscribe, do the usual, turn on post notifications. And yeah, I'll catch you next time. Peace out and goodbye.